everyone welcome back to friday session all right this is week five i believe just quick sound check before we get started Okay, uh, audio seems to be good on my side. Uh, any issues with audio, do let us know. Okay, so I think this is week five. Uh, this is introduction to candlesticks. And, you know, it's I'm, I'm all about polishing your basics here. So we are really going to go into the basics here. We're going to take a look at some of the examples that we have been looking at the market this week uh any questions do type it in we'll go through that and you can you can ask questions as we go along uh other than that we'll go through the slides and then we'll take a look at some of the application in the market if we do have time for that i'm pretty sure we do have time for it okay so this is introduction to candlesticks uh or understanding candlesticks my name is Vida Njoro, and we can get this started just quick general advice and risk warning disclaimer. Note that uh, any advice given is deemed to be of general nature as information or advice given does not take into account any particular objectives, financial situations, or needs. <clears throat> Therefore, at all times, you should consider the appropriateness of the advice before you act further. We do not offer signal service, managed funds, or other personalized advisory services, so please be aware of scams especially one that promises guaranteed returns or manage accounts. I don't do that. Uh, OctaFX doesn't do that either. Okay. Uh, save this and Forex are leveraged products that, that carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for everyone. You can lose more than your initial deposit, so you should ensure CFD and Forex trading meets your investment objectives, strategies, and charts used in this presentation are for example only. You are reminded again that past performance is not indicative of future performance. Okay, so let's talk about candlestick. I'm, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Uh, you guys can find out the history if you want to, but this is um, invented in the 17th century by a rice trader, uh, Munehisa Homa. I believe that's his name. I'm pretty sure that's his name. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm, this is probably, uh, and it's a little bit of an update. It's not in the last decade. Uh, basically, starting... Um, with online trading platforms, uh, pretty much everyone kind of use candlestick as a replacement to bar chart uh, as the main type of charting. So you are probably using candlesticks. You just, uh, along with about eighty percent of retail traders, uh, they they are using it without understanding the potential behind candlesticks. Okay. So we are going to cover some of the really basic ones tonight. Uh, some of you that were, I think there was a question asking if there's going to be an advanced session. <clears throat> there will be, uh, but this is week five. So I'm kind of giving a chance to anyone that just started out to kind of just grab the basic understanding of it. Uh, you know, uh, there was a question, you know, sometimes it fails, sometimes it's a trap. I really think it's depending on how you look at it. So if you are struggling with uh, basic candlesticks and you don't find it useful, I think it's really hard to make that choice to go into more of an advanced candlestick if you don't get the basic there. Okay, so let's get this going. All right, so this is uh, candlestick. It's very similar to, uh, to bar chart. It's basically an OHLC or the open, high, low, close chart. Uh, so <clears throat> it has an open, it has a close, it has a high and it has a low. The body and wicks, uh, that's basically what forms the candlestick pattern. Again, uh, this is overlooked by most traders even when using candlestick chart. I think the whole goal tonight is basically to get you <clears throat> familiar with the patterns that we see or, or actually how we use candlesticks uh, so it's, apart from giving you the information about the open the close the high and the low we are going to be using candlestick as a pattern uh, more than anything else especially when it comes to trading okay so uh, what's the main purpose of a candlestick uh, it's basically used to identify market sentiment and also the demand in the market, whether we have an increased demand, whether we have we 
you know if, if there's going to be buyers and sellers in the market uh what is the sentiment is the sentiment bullish or is it bearish uh that's what candlestick is for especially the weak part which we'll get into on uh which we'll get into later on uh it's easy to understand super super easy to understand uh if and I, I actually count candlestick as an indicator uh, that I actually use in my day-to-day -day trading. <clears throat> so, you know, regardless of whether or not you want to use the candlestick patterns, you are going to be looking at the chart in, in some way or another. I'm pretty sure about 80% of you or maybe 90%, maybe about 95% of you are probably using candlestick. You guys probably don't use bar charts nowadays. Um, or maybe even even line charts right um so yeah what it does it provides you with early detection of potential trend changes right the word here is potential um it's never going to be 100 percent with candlestick or with divergence it really is more about your experience in using them and this is where a lot of people say you know candlestick pattern is useless it's not useless it's just you know what kind of expectations you have uh, towards candlesticks i think that's where a lot of people need to take a look into uh, it's never going to be 100 uh especially if used alone with candlesticks uh basically there's no strategies out there no indicators out there that's going to give you a 100 percent guarantee of something right we are looking at potential uh, <clears throat> changes uh, of trends and um, when we look at candlestick patterns so let me just hold here for a second because I need you to drill in into your head that this is not a hundred percent guaranteed thing right it's a potential the word is potential so make sure you understand what you should be expecting from candlesticks don't assume that when you see uh, a certain pattern, uh, a certain candlestick patterns, that it has to be a guarantee the market has to reverse or the market has to continue in certain direction. That is not the whole point of technical analysis here, okay? Right, <clears throat> so we are gonna focus on the candlestick patterns. Uh, this is how you mainly use candlesticks. And the most commonly used patterns are reversal patterns. We talk about trends in week three we talk about trends in divergence last week uh, we are going to be looking at the same thing you really need to understand how to look at a trend before you even use candlestick patterns because if you don't understand the context of where the where the market is what is the underlying trend then you're going to get everything wrong with candlesticks so just make sure that you are well versed by now in understanding the trend lines uh sorry in understanding the trends in the market if this is your day one and jumping in we're still at the fifth session it's not too late it's not too late it's not too far behind to catch up on trends uh especially in week three and then we've got divergence last week that's going to help you out okay so last week we look at trends the week before that we look at trends so by now that you guys that have been following the series you should be uh well versed in looking at trends okay so again reversal patterns here that we talk about they imply a likelihood of change in trend not a confirmation of trend reversal i'm, I'm really going to drill this into you guys so don't assume that this is a confirmation that's not what how, that's not how you look at candlesticks that's not how we look at divergence last week uh you know we are looking at probability or implied probability of a potential change in the market so again that's how you should be looking at candlesticks as well okay the good thing about uh candlestick patterns is that the names are actually really really easy to understand so we are going to go through with um a few of the popular patterns here tonight we will talk about bullish and bearish engulfing we will talk about bullish and bearish piercing uh the hammer patterns which is really really trend dependent we've got the dojis uh we've got the morning and evening star these are your five most popular patterns these are the five most used 
candlestick patterns and you are going to come across this a lot in the market it's just that you need to understand the rules and the context before you take that as a potential identity uh you know potential <clears throat> changes or trend reversals in the market <clears throat> okay so the first one is engulfing right uh this can happen in an uptrend or in a downtrend uh, it could be a reversal pattern. It could also be a continuation pattern. Uh, but basically, the name says it all. It's either you're going to get a bullish engulfing or a bearish engulfing. <coughs> right? So the word engulfing is basically just to eat up the whole previous one. So it really engulfs. It, it covers up the previous one. Therefore, the second candle has to fully engulf the previous candle's body. So this is a a two candle pattern right we, we and when we talk about patterns obviously it's not going to be one single pattern so unless it's a, a hammer or a doji but an engulfing pattern appears a lot in the market uh, a lot of people are confused in reading up the engulfing uh, i also find that a lot of you know so-called traders or mentors right they really look at engulfing as a surefire thing uh it's not in fact engulfing is probably the less accurate patterns uh, but it's always there and you're gonna find this a lot in your trading so take a look at this now uh, candlestick patterns and you'll you'll actually start noticing all oh, right i've seen this before um so yeah it's good to know uh, but I don't really rely too much on an engulfing unless it happens in a very specific place uh, in, in the um, the price there. All right. Anyway, get this in. Uh, so the rule is very simple. The second candle has to fully engulf the previous candle's body. Again, it can be a reversal and a continuation pattern. Not too great in terms of a reversal pattern. Typically, we do have something else uh, that we use a lot more when it comes to reversal. <clears throat> uh, in terms of continuation pattern, it really depends on the situation. So I need I need to cover this. I need to go through this because you guys probably are familiar with this. Um, it's really hyped up uh i don't really use engulfing patterns so i don't really rely on engulfing patterns alone uh typically when there's an engulfing patterns that's your cue to start looking for other <clears throat> signs in the market for any continuation or any reversal right so you need to know this that's the thing everyone needs to understand this but is it for everyone to rely on engulfing patterns you know don't put your hopes too much on an engulfing pattern. It might look like uh, it's, oh, wow, you know, something has happened in the market. Something is reversed. You know, it was a bearish candle and all of a sudden it was a bullish candle. Uh, there's a lot of momentum going on. That's not necessarily the case uh, with engulfing, right? Piercing is like engulfing, uh, except that the second candle only closes more than 50% of the previous candle's body. So there, there is a, a fine difference here. Um, the first one is the second candle engulfs the previous candle. On a piercing, it pierces through half of the previous candle, but it doesn't actually closes up um, more than the previous candle. So, you know, between engulfing or piercing, this actually has a lot higher probability than engulfing being right. So yeah, you know, people people would say engulfing is it's it's uh, it's it's a stronger signal. Uh, I would say otherwise. Uh, I've seen a lot of patterns that we we see piercing. <coughs> That's uh, a much better sign than an engulfing. For one, uh, when it reverses uh, through piercing. It, the market doesn't take your uh, entry level too far away from your stop loss. So I like this one a lot more than an engulfing. And in terms of probability, this is actually higher than engulfing. We will take a look at some of the examples later on. Um, but pay closer attention to the bearish piercing, right? That 
has a very similar pattern later on that is that has a really high accuracy rate uh so keep an eye out on the bearish piercing there but the rules are pretty simple uh piercing candle has to close at least 50 percent of the previous candle's body right it has to be at least 50 percent. so if it only closes up to about 40 percent, that's not a piercing pattern again it is a reversal and a continuation pattern but again by looking at the statistics here this is actually typically more of a reversal pattern uh, than a continuation pattern. All right, let's talk about hammers. Uh, this is also another one that, that gets confused uh, a lot by the market. In fact, a lot of uh, traders nowadays, you know, past 10 years when, when I talk to traders, new traders, they barely even know how to actually use hammers, uh, which to me, this single um, pattern or single candlestick pattern, this is actually more accurate than a bullish, engulf a bullish engulfing or a bearish engulfing. Uh, you just need to understand what's going on here because the body of the candle itself doesn't matter. It can be a bearish candle. It can be a bullish candle. It just doesn't matter what... <clears throat> matters here is that where it appears right typically you only see hammers uh, at the very end of uh, a certain trend before uh, you know a swing high or swing low is formed that's where you're going to be looking at hammers all right this is going to be trend dependent so without understanding uh you know without understanding how to look at trends this is going to be useless to you so make sure you understand what trend is and how you actually identify a trend and figure it out <clears throat> because hammers in an uptrend and hammers in a downtrend, they have, they have different names. So if you see a market going up and you see a hammer pattern, they are actually bearish reversal signs. They're not, uh, they're not any bullish sign. Uh, they, they're not going to be a bullish sign. They're actually a bearish indication in the market. So <clears throat> if you see a market going up and you see um, the hanging man patterns, for example, <coughs> that's where the trend is actually, uh, the, trend is, uh, the trend could actually end or a swing high could actually be formed, okay? <clears throat> so we got a uh, hanging man where we see the open here uh, and then we have a close higher in this example here, but we actually have price going all the way down and then buyers came in to push it up. So we've got um, the longer wick to the downside. If it, if this appears in an uptrend, uh, that's really a buyer's kind of lush push uh, in an attempt to actually push price to the upside. <clears throat> if we see a, a shooting star, right, uh, you know, the we saw that market went up and then sellers came in and push it down but it's the naming convention here that makes it uh, easy if, if i say hanging man or shooting star it's it's <clears throat> it's not um a positive connotation there's no positive connotation to it we've got a hanging man obviously someone's about to die we've got a shooting star a star that actually falls down right so that's that's kind of um the naming convention that we have here so this is bearish if a hammer pattern appears in an uptrend. If the opposite is true. If they um, this hammer patterns appear in a downtrend, that's where we actually call it a hammer. If you look at it, it does look like a hammer, right? Uh, we just call it a hammer or reverse hammer. This one here, the same patterns, right? Just depend depending on where it appears. I can go back to the previous slide. And I go back to the current slide, you're not going to be looking at any changes here except for the naming convention. So depending on where it appears, whether it's in an uptrend or is it in a downtrend, it has different meanings. If it appears in a downtrend, then it has uh, a bullish connotation to it. Uh, it. That's an indication that the market is a little bit more bullish, right? So again, instead of continuation pattern, you need to look at hammers as reversal patterns in the market. And that's how you want to be looking at hammers, okay? All right. The piercing that we just talked, the bearish piercing, uh, there's actually another pattern here that's very, very similar. It's called the dark cloud cover. Uh, it only occurs in an uptrend, and this is actually one of the strongest reversal pattern. 
<clears throat> notice um, if you take a look at the second candle there if you're trading um, you, you need to understand how uh, the um, the futures market the forex market the, the future commodity futures uh, uses candlesticks they're actually a modification of the candlesticks that's that's used in the equity market all right basically all technical analysis um, starts from the equity market <clears throat> so it's very common for the equity market to create a gap right especially this one here it gaps to the upside at the end of an uptrend that's a, a strong indication that the market could fail but in the futures market you know because the market runs 24 hours a day you know you it's very rare for you to actually get a gap especially on the daily chart you might get that on the early time frame uh, if there's um, a spike in news or something like that but it's very rare for you to actually see that gap in the futures market so <clears throat> If the close of the first candle and the open of the second candle is actually the same, uh, it's, it's generally accepted. And that's why I say the piercing pattern is, uh, has actually uh, has a stronger weight to it in terms of being um, instead of it, it, with it being uh, sorry, with it having a higher probability of being a reversal. We need to take a look at the dot clock over here, because if you see a bearish piercing, in the futures market, especially the forex market, that's basically uh, a dark cloud cover. Uh, so yeah, you need to consider that as well. Anyway, we'll take a look at some of the examples later on in terms of identifying dark cloud covers. But you'll look, you'll probably look at it later on that you know maybe out of seven, seven out of ten dark cloud covers that you see, it kind of ends up being close to the end of the a trend okay <clears throat> right next one is doji uh, so if you have a, an open and a close at the same time at the same price you'll end up with candles that doesn't have a body to it it'll it'll have uh it will, it will just end up with a tail to it or a wick to it uh so dojis are basically candles without bodies it's it, it happens when the open price and the close price uh, ends up at the same price level, right? So it opens and closes at the same level. There's no changes <clears throat> in the open and the close. That's where you see dojis being formed. Now because it opens and closes at the same price, it basically indicates indecision in the market. So when you see dojis, uh, you need to check all of your tools uh, at your disposal if there's something in the market there because typically when you see a doji there's uh, indecision in the market so length of length of length of the wick gives an indication to the sentiment so if you see a wick that uh, that goes all the way up then you know there's actually selling pressure because price managed to go all the way up and then get pushed down by sellers in the market if you have a long wick at the bottom then you know there's buying uh, pressure pressure if you got this, um, w the wick on both sides are exactly the same, then that's really a neutral market in there. Okay, so again, <clears throat> when you look at dojis, you, you know, in fact, it's not just dojis. When you look at candlestick prices, uh, when you look at bar charts, when you look at candlestick charts, it's always the wick that carries a lot of weight. It's not how the body looks like. It's really the tail end of the candle. That's basically what you want to be watching out for. Okay. All right. So uh, next one. It's before I actually jump on to three candle patterns. Let me just go through the chats here. If there's any questions. Hello Emmanuel, this is my first webinar, not really getting the whole thing. Um, this could be a starting point for you as well. Uh, but yeah, it's it's good to have that knowledge about trends. So if you if you just jump in, uh, watch the previous week's video, at least get a, a really good understanding of how you actually identify trends in the market. 
Candle is not work out properly. I don't understand that question. <coughs> How is it going to take please? Can there be an article to be read later on this topic? Um, there's actually a book that I, I could really recommend. Um, so this is written by Steve Neeson. So, uh, you know, when we talk about candlestick patterns, right? The, the Japanese market have been using this for basically uh, the beginning of, of trading, right? Uh, in fact, when this was invented in the 17th century, but the Western world only understand this when Steve Neeson published his book uh, on candlesticks. So yeah, you, you might want to read up on that one, but it's, it's a really heavy material and you only kind of really read it if you understand the basics here. Okay. How long is this going to take? We've got another half an hour. Okay, let's jump into the three candle patterns. It takes longer to develop, obviously, we, uh, because you kind of need the third candle. But it does have a higher probability than, let's say, a bullish engulfing or a bearish engulfing or, or piercing patterns. Uh, except for the dark cloud cover, uh, that one has a really high probability. But anyway, three candle pa patterns are really simple. So we've got the first one that we have is a morning star. This is a bullish reversal pattern and you are actually going to be really familiar with this pattern because if you take a look at your chart and at the end of a swing high or uh, at, at, sorry at the end of a swing low or before the market reverses, typically you are going to look at this pattern forming uh, a lot of the times. Uh, this is what you're going to be looking at. So it is a bullish reversal pattern <clears throat> and it only occurs in a downtrend when the market is going down. So the first candle needs to be a bearish candle. The second candle needs to be a, a doji or a hammer, right? It can be both a bullish candle or a bearish candle. It can be red, it can be blue, it doesn't matter. The second candle you want to be looking at, it's basically just how it appears. So hammer is ideal am yeah, right it might appear as a doji as well uh, so yeah if you take a look at the morning star it's actually uh, either a piercing pattern or an, uh, an engulfing pattern with a doji or a hammer in between right so we, we talk about those patterns so you slip in those uh, you slip in a hammer or a doji in the middle of it it'll actually form um, the three kind of patterns like the morning star here well, let me go through the rules again <clears throat> market needs to be in a downtrend market needs to be going down right so even if you're new here uh, you would know when the market is going up or down right if you see the market going down and then you have <clears throat> the first candle being a bearish candle the second candle needs to be a doji or hammer uh, the color doesn't matter the third candle is bullish and closes at least 50% of the first candle's body, right? The third candle can be an engulfing, but it needs to be minimum a piercing for it to actually validate a morning star pattern. So just get the rules straight when, when you look at the market later on. <clears throat> okay, evening star, it's the opposite. It is a bearish reversal pattern and it only happens in an uptrend. So if the market goes up, and all of a sudden, uh, the candlestick forms this pattern. You need to be really careful if you have a long position or if you have a buy position. The first candle needs to be a bullish candle. <clears throat> the second candle uh, needs to be a doji or hammer. Again, it can be bullish or a bearish candle. The third candle has to be bearish and closes at least 50% of the first candle's body. How can, sorry, I need to answer this uh, really quickly. How can we calculate pressure of selling or buying in Doji? You, you cannot calculate sentiments. You can look at the potential of sentiments in a market, but you cannot specifically calculate. There's no really uh, a weighing process into it. But uh, all I can say is that the more you look at the market, the longer you look at charts and you know you try to use it um, with practice obviously you, you only you are you are only going to get better with experience and practice you can 
I can tell you all the basics. Everyone can tell you the basics, but you need to experience it by yourself to get a hang of, you know, how do you look at selling pressure in the market and stuff like that, okay? But uh, I'll cover a few hints later on just in case you guys need it. In terms of what selling pressure is that we are looking at, it typically appears near um, that selling pressure or buying pressure that we have from, say, a doji. Uh, typically is dependent on uh, support and resistance, which we also covered in the second week as well. Okay, so evening star again, let me just uh, emphasize this for you. It is a bearish reversal pattern. It will only appear, uh, sorry, it will, it can, it can, it can appear in a downtrend, but it's not valid. Uh, as a pattern, it's only valid as a pattern if it happens in an uptrend. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is a reversal pattern. If you look at this, this is not going to be a continuation pattern. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next two is actually really, really rare, but we actually saw this. Uh, let me let me pull up the charts later on, but uh, we actually are seeing this pattern uh, in the past month or so uh, in the market. So this could actually be a bearish reversal or continuation pattern. Uh, it occurs in an uptrend or strong downtrend. All right. Uh, if you see uh, three black crows, uh, that's basically three bearish candle that uh, is typically in about the same size. So if you see this in an uptrend, obviously that's going to give you a, a negative sign in the market. If it's really a strong downtrend, uh, like there's actually an example on this on the pound USD um, that we can take a look at. Okay, so <clears throat> it will only occur in an uptrend or a really strong downtrend. So uh, the downtrend has to be really, really strong for this one to appear. So I would say it's it's good to know this. Uh, I think you need to know this because sometimes when you see consecutive drops in a market, it might scare a lot of people. Uh, it rarely occurs, uh, but it's good if you know what it is, right? It really gives you a strong indication that the bears have wrestled control from the bulls. So we've got more sellers in the market um, than whatever not. So if you see three black crows, that's a bearish sign. You see three white soldiers, uh, it's the opposite of that. Okay, it happens in an uptrend or, well, yeah, it, ha it happens in an uptrend. Rarely, rarely occurs in the market again, but it does give a strong indication that the bulls have wrestle control from the bear. So if you see these patterns, um, typically you don't use this as an entry into the market. You use these two patterns here to actually know whether you should stay in a trade or you sh should you get out from a trade. So we don't actually use this pattern as an entry. This is more like a guideline. Hey, we are on the right track. That's pretty much it. Okay. <clears throat> now, before we go on to show you the uh, practical examples here, are candlestick patterns reliable? They are reliable, but a lot of people think that, you know, you can use candlestick by itself. Using it by itself is actually really dangerous, <clears throat> right? Um, and we have... Actually, there, there's actually a quote uh, that's actually by Steve Neeson in his book. It's using candlestick by itself. It's like placing a letter on clouds. There's really nothing supporting it. So you need to understand that using it by itself is actually really, really dangerous. So don't think, you know, I know a lot of people start with candlesticks, but I don't start this webinar series with candlesticks just for the one reason. Uh, people might, you know, look at candlestick patterns and say, oh yeah, this is super basic. Oh, this is good enough for me to trade with. No, it's not. I, I, this is week five of our webinar series. And this is uh, when I want to talk about candlesticks. Because again, especially new traders, I don't really want you guys, new traders, to actually use candlestick by itself. Uh, you know, whatever patterns that you saw tonight, and you start looking at the, if you start making trading decisions based on these patterns alone, it's actually really, really dangerous. Um, 
Again, candlesticks are really just warning signs. It's not really 100% confirmation or anything like that. So the combination of candlestick patterns with other indicators or strategies is actually necessary. It's not optional. It is a necessary uh, part of using candlesticks, all right? Uh, the reversal patterns that we talk about actually works best near support and resistance level. That's just a given. It's really logical. <clears throat> Three black crows or white soldiers, any body length or it has to have a large body. Uh, it actually has to have a large significant body. Um, and the wicks has to be kind of sh not too long or at least kind of equal on both sides. Right. This is just an illustration. This is just something that I draw on Excel. But in real market condition, when we look at three white soldiers or the three black crows, there, there's a, a lot of variation into this. So this is kind of a guideline, but it's not necessarily it doesn't have to necessarily look exactly like this, because if you <clears throat> want the market to look exactly like this, that means the market has to actually gap down as well. So there are variations to this. OK. Right, so um, here are some candlestick pattern examples uh, that we have here. This is published in 2016. Uh, I know this is six years old, but we are going to take a look at uh, the past two weeks in the market there for any signs uh, or of our candlestick patterns that we can actually look at as an example. But, you know, even going back to 2016, We've got pound USD at 1.58, right? It's so high back then. Anyway, um, first up, we actually have a bearish piercing or a dark cloud cover that we actually look at the first circle, right? The second circle is actually another dark cloud cover. The third circle is also another dark cloud cover that we saw. The fourth one is actually a bearish engulfing, and it, uh, if you take a look at where it happens, it basically happens at the swing highs in a market. <clears throat> the fifth one, we have a bearish engulfing as well, and the sixth one, we have an evening star. If you take a look at the whole trend here, every time the market goes up and creates a new swing high, you saw this pattern happen, and then it reverses, right? So that's how we actually look at candlestick patterns. If if I were to bring up um, the chart later on and you just take a look at the swing highs or the swing lows, you'll actually start noticing these patterns. Okay. So um, taking a look at oil. See, dollar. This is taken in 2016. The oil was at 30 bucks, man. Can you believe it? That's a hundred less from the um the rally up last last uh last year i'm oh, sorry at the, at the beginning of the year <clears throat> right anyway <laughs> this is really old example but if you take a look at uh, the oil there um you see the flat market uh the sideways market condition on the daily on oil notice what appears there there's actually an in an if you take a closer look there's actually an evening star there's a hanging man, uh, there's a shooting star before the market actually goes down. At the swing low, we actually have um, a morning star. And the swing high, we have another evening star, we have a morning star again. Uh, it just goes back and forth, right? So that's uh, how it is when we look at candlestick patterns. Or when you are learning about candlestick patterns which we talk about reversal patterns most of them are a, a stronger reversal patterns i typically don't use i don't look at candlestick patterns as continuation patterns even if there's a bullish engulfing or a piercing i typically uh re it registers in my head as a reversal pattern because for the one reason that you are actually going to be looking at this patterns at the very end of a swing high or swing low right all right, this is on the US 30. <clears throat> Obviously, still still very, very low at 17,000. Uh, this is again in 2016. So if you take a look at <clears throat> the uh, the first one at the top there, we actually have a bearish engulfing, and then we have um, bearish piercing. Notice this is more of an approximation. It's more of a warning sign that the market uh, could start going in a certain direction. 
but it's not necessarily a, a trigger point to reverse the market. You know, patterns could appear consecutively, but it might not necessarily mean that it, the market should reverse. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't expect to see a pattern. And then you, the way you think about it is that, you know, I saw a lot of traders actually think about it, uh, think about this with candlestick patterns is that the market has to reverse. Um, <clears throat> I typically don't, especially if you're a beginner, I would say follow the trends uh, because it's actually really dangerous to predict where the market is actually going to end. Uh, so yeah, just make it a habit to follow the trend. Okay. Right. So uh, if you take a look at these support and resistances uh this is silver again this is uh, a really old chart this is in 2012 i believe uh with this one here take a look at the two circles there you see how long that wick is that's actually a hammer right that we saw it bounces off a support level that's where it, it starts having a lot more significance if there's actually a support a resistance level <clears throat> We're going to take a look at an example later on in the market so uh, that would give you a much more updated view but just keep in mind when you use candlestick you really want to know where your support and resistance are and they have to be a really significant support and resistance to actually be useful uh, to candlestick patterns okay so we could use it as a trend line rejection uh, you know, if you keep failings at, at uh, a trend line, you know, you'll take a look at this one. We've got um, a duck clock cover <coughs> and then we got hanging man, shooting star, doji, hanging man, shooting star again, bearish engulfing. <coughs> that should give you a, a strong indication that there's actually selling pressure in the market. Okay. All right. So we could use doji at a key psychological price level or at a Fibonacci level. So you can use this with uh, trend lines, you can use it with Fibonacci ratios, <clears throat> you can use it with Ichimoku Cloud, which is what I've, I've always used it with. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of options. But what I'm trying to say is just never use candlesticks alone. It's really, really dangerous uh, and you need to use other tools to verify what you see in the market. Okay, um, this is an example on Grexit. You guys probably only knew Brexit, right? <laughs> we have, uh, the market actually faces a, a problem. Uh, Greece uh, nearly went bankrupt. Uh, they actually went bankrupt. Uh, the, the, um, the, the economy actually fails. Uh, the financial system actually fails. <coughs> there was actually talk about um, Greece leaving the uh, the euro, <coughs> and that's basically the uh, the summit that we saw in twenty twelve. But you know what you look at this one here. If you take a look at the EU summit results that you see on the screen there, you can screenshot it if you want to and take a look at it and learn about it. If you take a look at the the uh, the movement here, this there's actually something very similar this week, uh, which was um, the CPI numbers right on Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we'll we'll take a look at that as an example. See if there's actually change, you know, signs of potential reversal and whatever not. So I want to focus more on you know telling you that typically at, at key points in the market, before the market reverses to the upside, we've got a morning star, we've got a bullish piercing. At the top, we've got a dark cut cover, and then you know, bullish piercing, bearish engulfing. It just appears everywhere. Now. Before the summit starts, uh, there's actually a, a series of dojis and hammers and reverse hammers. Uh, if you take a look at this one here, this is on the one hour time frame. So for, for a period of about half a day, uh, the market was actually really flat. You know, buyers and sellers keep getting in and out of the market. So that's why you see a series of dojis and hammers. <coughs> All right. And then we've got the EU summit results. The market rally up. And that's cue um, for a lot of traders to jump into the market, right? No. If you guys have been watching the outlook this week, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, a similar, I actually sent out a similar warning here. Um, 
a lot of traders especially new traders jump into a rally like uh, a strong move to the upside and people just jump into it so uh, you know i could ask that question here uh it's going to be painful for you to answer me but a lot of you that looks at uh the market this week and if you bought in on that cpi rally uh what what happens is that you see a uh, market goes flat after that right it, it rallies up you buy in and then the market goes up for a bit and then it doesn't go anywhere so uh that's a very similar situation here but at the end of it you know when, when the market is about to end there's actually a bearish engulfing and then if you take a look at the whole eu summit here in a period of a week it actually reverses and it creates a new low in the market especially for the euro so um if you know candlesticks and you actually pay close attention to what candlestick patterns are telling you, you could actually get uh, a lot of warnings before a market reverses. Uh, if a market rally is up, there's actually a lot of warning as well that you know it might not be strong enough to maintain that rally, right? So these are simple little things that you is actually available to you in the chart, but a lot of people just don't know how to look at it. <coughs> okay. So uh, let me go through the questions and then we'll jump on to the examples. <laughs> Drink more water. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. It's, it's actually not my throat. It's, it's actually my vocal cord that's having a problem right now. Yes, uh, Japanese candlestick charting techni techniques uh, by Steve Neeson. And then the other one, uh, he has three books that you need to uh, go through with. But yeah, uh, the book is called Japanese, Cha uh, Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques by Steve Neeson. If, if you really want to delve deeper into um, candlesticks, then by all means, it's a really good book. Uh, and it's, I think it's one of the only book that I would recommend to traders uh, if, if someone actually asks if there's any good trading books out there. I would highly recommend <coughs> uh, this book here. Anyway, let's just jump into the chart here and take a look at some of the examples. Uh, let me bring up the daily on the pound USD. All right. Uh, actually, I am actually going to remove this uh, and we are going to focus uh, just on the candlesticks. So this is on the, no, I don't need weekly. I need this to be on the daily. I'll hide the Ichimoku so we don't look at Ichimoku. Okay. So here we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, the title of the book, uh, it's actually, TY actually posted this. So really uh, helpful in this one. So yeah, Team Okta, if you guys can... Uh, Post this again. There we go. Right. Anyway, back to this. Uh, let's take a look at the market here. I actually want to bring up the CPI numbers, but anyway, uh, let's just zoom out for a little bit and just take a look at what's going on in the market. Um, the past few weeks. <clears throat> We've got uh, several key levels. I'm gonna draw out some of the key levels here. So we basically need to identify some of the key levels before we can actually start um, <coughs> using uh, candlesticks here. But if you take a look at this one, uh, 1.2 is actually a strong psychological price level. Uh, if you take a look at the whole swing, uh, the highs and the lows, I can, I can highlight it. You'll actually find something in there. So we actually have a bearish engulfing in there. We actually have a bullish engulfing at that swing low. Uh, again, this one here. This is actually unique. Uh, this is uh, this a similar. <coughs> uh, sorry, let me just get no. Doesn't want to go. Okay, fine. Uh, turn off the magnet. This is actually a good example of a series of hammers uh, and dojis in the market. Uh, this is where we actually see a bounce in a market, All right? So that bounce happened at 1.2. So you know that's a strong sign in there uh, that we see in the market, <clears throat> right? 
notice where it starts going sideways uh what actually happens here is that the market goes down and then you actually see a series of um hammers uh in in there right so there's there's actually is sorry candlestick is actually showing you telling you hey watch out you know something's going on in the market uh at the very top here around 1.2 1.2 1.2 375 1.23 uh you'll see the market starts getting rejected again this is actually 1 1.2 1.2 1.2250 i believe yeah sorry There we go. So we got 1.2250. We saw uh, a strong resistance there. We see the market um, showing up with uh, full bearish engulfing. We saw uh, a little bit of uh, an evening star pattern. Then we have that run to the downside, right? Uh, this three candles here, uh, this actually counts as uh, three black crows. So that actually counts as uh, three black crows. Uh, this actually counts as three black crows as well. So again, this, you know, whatever is, whatever has been going on in the market, um, as long as you don't go against the trend, you should be good. But for those that messed up, and I know a lot of people messed up in the past month, two months or so, it's because they attempted to figure out where the market might bottom out. I would s never do that. Uh, it's really what I call caught, uh, catching a falling knife with your hand. Uh, you're just going to get injured, right? Right, so when we see the market get pushed down, uh, you know, again, we're, saw uh, we're seeing signs of uh, doji. We've got a hammer. We, s we saw a little bit of a pickup in the market, right? So... There's actually an example here on the Euro USD on the 15 minutes. If I can bring that in. All right. So, so there we go. So we've got that CPI numbers that came out. Uh, I'll hide Ichimoku. I don't need that. Notice before the market turns around what, what actually appears at the very top there. Right, you actually see a series of um, hanging mans and shooting stars, uh, hammer patterns being formed. So, when you see the market does this, that's you know telling people, hey, hold on a second here, something is going on in the market. It might not be right. You actually see people getting in and out of their positions. Um, so yeah, you could actually get into that and maybe have a small stop loss up there. And you know, obviously, I'm saying that this is during the cpi numbers but for the cpi this week we actually prepare pre we are actually prepared for this <clears throat> on the monday's webinar session so yeah anyway right so you you'll see it right the market drops uh and then we see a little bit of a pickup here uh if you notice where the, where the market is picking up a little bit it starts forming you know those dojis again those hammers again so that's why i say if you see a hammer it actually has a, a strong meaning behind it more it's more so than the bullish or piercing uh market sorry piercing patterns uh I, i'm more uh, i'm actually more afraid of looking at hammers and and dojis in the market uh, than anything else because it, it really tells you the market is quite indecisive uh you know buyers and sellers are actually <clears throat> fighting for the market you know which one is actually going to hold strong but we will take a look at some of the example on on the dollar yen as well all right dollar yen right now uh it is in uh, a pendant right now but we are actually seeing signs a little bit signs of potential weakness in a market but that's not necessarily meaning a trend reversal right this is where it gets a lot of people confused now let me, i'm trying to get this as best as i can i'm sorry i'm trying to explain this as best as i can to you because right now <clears throat> you look at the dollar yen and you call that an evening star you look at the dollar yen and you call that a dark cover or a bearish piercing right but that's not the whole picture so if you use candlesticks by itself then it doesn't really tell you anything Right. If you just assume that, oh yeah, I'm seeing these patterns. I want to short the dollar yen right now. 
number one Going against the dollar right now before the FOMC is kind of a, a tough call. So most of you probably go short and then the short doesn't go anywhere, right? You might be thinking, oh yeah, that, that's a bearish reversal sign. Let me just go wrong, uh, go, go, go and short it. Obviously that's wrong, right? That's not going to happen. You know why? Because I'm actually going to put in a few stuff here. <clears throat> I'll draw one simple uh, horizontal resistance at 145. Okay, and then I can draw a support trend line. Um, I can also draw a support trend line from all the way up here, down there. You'll see how well supported it is because it's in a strong uptrend. So selling the market in a strong uptrend like that is ridiculous. Uh, I know despite the candlestick telling you, hey, there's an evening star. Hey, there is a, a bearish engulfing pattern. You need to take a look at the whole picture here and you actually need to understand what it's being formed in here, right? We, we talk about patterns, yeah? Because this is an ascending. So if you see an ascending triangle, usually is a continuation pattern. Now, if you start figuring this out and say, oh yeah, you know what? Uh, it's showing sign of bearishness, but it is in a continuation pattern. It is within an ascending triangle. That, that <clears throat> my friend would say, hey, candlestick is not right, right? Or candlestick uh, is not really good. As I'll say, candlestick by itself is really useless. What it's telling you in the market is that, hey, the momentum is actually slowing down. When we say the momentum is slowing down, doesn't necessarily mean it's actually going to be a downtrend reversal because for it to reverse to the downside, it needs to confirm a few things. Obviously, it will need to break key support level, which we have at 143. And we'll, it will also need to break the support trend line. So a reversal, a confirmation of reversal will only happen when price actually closes below 143. Even then, you'll actually find support at around 141. So, see where I'm going with this? Candlestick is telling you, okay, the uptrend might not be strong enough at this point in time. There could be a possibility of a reversal, but it needs confirmation from other tools like a simple support and resistance, uh, a simple chart pattern, uh, a simple support trend line, a reversal of a trend needs to be confirmed by something else. It cannot just be through candlesticks alone. So that's the first question at the beginning of this session is that, hey, you know what candlestick looks like a trap most of the time. It's not being a trap most of the time. It's just that a lot of people don't understand how to look at candlesticks. So this is really important that I actually show you this example. <clears throat> we are actually seeing a slowdown in that push to the upside. It could be a reversal. It could be. But at the same time, it is still contained within an ascending triangle. Therefore, if it does break the range to the upside, if it does break above 145, then it could be a continuation to the upside. So what's the story with dollar yen? Uh, I talk about this on Monday. We talk about this on the Wednesday session. It could transition into a sideways market condition. That is what we were looking at. We could be looking at a move between 142 and 143. That's basically how the dollar yen was, right? So we are looking at that right now. We're seeing uh, the market actually slow down for a bit. If I go into the early time frame, it's actually starting to flatten out, right? We take a look at the candlestick patterns on, on the early time frame. Obviously, we've got a full bearish engulfing. But you'll start noticing that the market starts zigzagging. It starts reversing here and there, right? But if, we, if I zoom in into what's going on, obviously it is trapped in a sideways market condition for the dollar yen. So again, don't just assume that candlestick is correct. It's just a warning sign. Nothing else, nothing more. You need to have other tools to actually confirm it. <clears throat> so what I would say with candlestick is that you got to be looking at candlesticks all the time. Might as well understand what it means, right? Is uh, our candlestick patterns good 
as an entry into the market? No, they're really bad. In fact, they're really dangerous. If you if you actually enter the market based on candlestick, um, I will I will tell you to stop it right now because uh, it's really really dangerous. So try to avoid that. The time that this candles appear and closes, it'll be too late to enter the market. As I said, uh, you know, it's it's there as a warning sign. I mean, right now, I, I would say on the dollar yen, I'll tell you right now, I don't have a position on the dollar yen because I need to wait for further confirmation. Either it breaks to the downside or it actually breaks to the upside. Does the candlestick pattern give me an insight into what's going on in the market right now? Yes. Uh, the market just... Uh, the market is telling me right now that it's actually finding a, a tough resistance at 145. That's how you look at candlesticks. Uh, it's warning you it's approaching 145. That's a tough level to break. It actually starts being a resistance. So by using candlestick as an entry, it's either too late or it's either too early. So to me, using candlestick as an entry is just really, really bad decision. So try not to do that. <coughs> especially for beginners, uh, new traders that, you know, just learn about candlesticks and everyone just cover candlesticks. Hey, everyone covers, covers candlestick the same way. It's just that some people have a lot of belief into it. I don't, you know, uh, I would use that as a warning sign because regardless of the matter, you're not going to be looking at the market with um, a bar chart, right? Are you going to be looking at bar charts? You, 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 you're most likely going to be using candlesticks. So regardless, you're going to be looking at price movements. Might as well understand what candlestick means. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, I don't think a lot of people that trade the tr um, technical are going to be using at line charts, right? Uh, I use Renko. Uh, I use Kagi. So uh, I can look at different stuff, which we are going to cover that uh, later on, um, on a more advanced level. But right now, you have candlesticks. Might as well just understand what it means. Uh, might help you with the trading, right? Is uh, are they uh, are they a good strategy to go with if you want to open the position based on candlesticks? No, they're really bad. <coughs> so yeah. I will put more on the strong emphasis that it would measure sentiment, right? Right now for the dollar yen, for example, if you look at it correctly, you would look at it as, say, as saying this. Um, buyers are actually getting out of the market, maybe for profit taking, or maybe they're afraid that could be a huge reversal in the market. That's number one. Number two, it's starting to build up. Those patterns starts appearing when price touches 145. So maybe that's a good indication that 145 is a strong resistance, right? <clears throat> but that's it. It doesn't tell me anything else. It doesn't tell me that I need to short it. If you attempted to sell over here, obviously your stop loss is going to get hit. Simple as that. All right? And that's just jumping in too early. So if you if you say this is an evening star, uh, I will actually short this here. Uh, and then maybe have my stop loss here. You would be taken out by the market. Simple as that. Okay, so it's not worth it. Now let's say the market is going in your favor right now because it's not creating a new high. Um, you could go here and say, "Hey, there's a, a dark cloud cover here. Let's have my stop loss here. Let's have my target down here or wherever." And then you saw the market doesn't go anywhere for two days. Are you gonna get frustrated? Of course you're gonna get frustrated. So. They're not for entries. They're a warning sign that you need to check your indicators. Something is going on in the market. There, could there be something else that we can use to confirm what's going on in the market? That's how we look at candlesticks, okay? <clears throat> it's basically a sign for someone who already has a position. No, it's a sign for anyone in the market, whether you have a position or you don't have a position. Um, the way I tell people is this. You are in a highway, uh, you need to exit the highway, you look at the signs first before the exit, right? The sign starts appearing before the exit happens. So that's how I look at it. So you're, you're driving in a highway, you look at um, signs that says, hey, in two kilometers, your exit on your left and stuff like that, right? So that's basically what candlestick is. As simple as that, it's just a warning sign. Nothing else, nothing more. So... 
don't ever ever use candlesticks uh, as your main decision making tool to actually get in uh, or out of a position you need something else candlesticks are not for that okay so that's <clears throat> that's the emphasis that I have tonight um, a lot of you might be disappointed because other traders say oh yeah we see bearish engulfing we see evening star we sell the market blah 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 don't don't do that that's it's, it's just dangerous okay all right so uh, I think that's a wrap for tonight thanks for joining in on this Friday it has been a very interesting month uh, of September <laughs> Either you, uh, you know, a lot of traders are in a lot of pain or a lot of traders are actually really enjoying it. But uh, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, volatility in the market is always good for traders uh, if you know how to manage it well. So I guess uh, good luck to your trades. Uh, stay safe. Have a great weekend. I'll see you uh, next week again for the educational session on Friday uh, for the Telegram channel we have a monday webinar uh for everyone else we have a wednesday web live trading session and then just keep an eye out on the outlook that's going to be posted on monday all right guys thanks for your time thanks for joining me joining in with me on this friday have a great weekend ahead